Hey, what's up everybody? It's Stephen Williams, founder and president of the creditrepairshop.com and I just got it hot off the presses. Uh, debt released into the market, $10.977 million uh, in credit card debt. Uh, these are, this is some old debt to average charge, well, the, uh, accounts, 3,869 accounts, uh, char average charge off date, which is crazy, average charge off date, 2010, and it says some accounts, some, quote, some accounts were 2013, average account balance is 2,800 bucks, they want to sell this whole package for five thousand uh, dollars this stuff here if anyone get this it's gonna be out of statute of limitations for most states uh, I mean but they do this because they get away with it people just don't know their rights um, people just let them do it so let me just bag up I know some uh, most of you that watch my videos know what I'm about to say but this is for the new people that come on to the channel is that if you ever receive a letter from a debt collector the first thing that you do step one you get copies of your credit reports and you need to look at uh, when the original charge off date was not when they place something on your reports when is the original charge off date for that particular item uh, you can if you if you don't know the original creditor on that letter that they send you there's going to be the original creditors information on there they might try to hide it be in a corner somewhere it's going to have the debt collection company and then somewhere it'll have the original account holder you look on your credit reports and you look at the original charge off date and if then you need to go and look at your state's statute of limitation laws for contract law Every state is different. I wish it was all the same. I can't just tell you all of them, but I can tell you that there's three states that have ridiculous statute of limitations in the favor of creditors, which is a 10-year and a 15-year uh, statute of limitation. Most states are in the three to six-year range. Um, and what that means is that if that debt, that charge-off debt is not uh, a judgment, and they try to come after you for it and it's past the statute of limitations and you haven't made no payment or nothing in between that period of time they cannot legally collect that debt that is the law that is the law 100 percent don't let them trick you into making a one dollar or a ten dollar payment because what that'll do is it'll reset the clock so don't fall for that so if you get that letter you look on your credit reports and then you look at your statute of limitations for contract law in your state and you can get that information for statute of limitations on my website go to my blog the credit repair shop .com. in the search bar in my blog at the bottom go all the way to the bottom click blog and then you type in statute of limitations and it'll take you to a page to to get that information uh, and then on your credit reports if you don't have your credit reports it needs to show everything, not the free report places. It, you need to know everything, the details. And you're going to get that from a monitoring service. Uh, please use the one that I have. The link here is in the box here. Your, the number, three scores.com. Look at that. And if it is past statute of limitations, not a judgment, it's past statute of limitations, then what you do is you notify them. Uh, debt collection company, uh, your name, your information, no social security number, none of that stuff, just your name, information, and their name and information, address information, and you just simply write them a letter. Don't try to be smart with it. Just say, I'm informing you that the debt you're trying to collect for such and such company according to my the laws in my state is past statute limitations and uh, is past legal statute of limitations and I request or I demand that you cease all collection activities for this debt or I will be reporting you to the 
proper authorities in my state. Proper authorities in your state is the state attorney general's office, anyone that handles consumer affairs, and also especially who does the licensings for your banking and debt collectors. There's usually the same uh, organization in the government that does that. Ours is the Department of Financial Institution. Yours may be named something else. So you want to also have their addresses on there. You don't have to send it to them, but you want to have their addresses on there so they know, the debt collector knows, you know who to send this to because they're breaking the law. And if they don't stop uh, cease collection activities, you're going to report them. 10 times out of 10, you do it that way, it's going to go away, and you need to keep their response letter saying that they're going to cease collection activities if they send you one. So if they try to sell it again, like this was sold again, to another debt collection company, you'll have that letter, and then you'll also be able to potentially have a lawsuit or some type of fine that they would have to pay you because you'll have paper trail track record proof that they were notified and they tried to resell a debt that was not legally collectible. So that's what you would have to do. Now, I want to jump right into answering questions um, about uh, qu questions from Facebook and YouTube that I've been getting. Uh, one of them was a, a person wrote that they have a bankruptcy that's outdated, they're having trouble getting it removed off of their credit reports, and they're wondering why. Uh, it get, just keeps coming back verified. And this is this uh, uh, bankruptcy is past statute of limitations to even be on their credit reports. And what I told her to do is she needs to, number one, uh, do a dispute with LexisNexis. That's who has all of the, the public records history. Do a dispute with them, notifying them that this is not supposed to be on my credit file anymore, and you need to stop reporting. Uh, to, so that because when they when the credit bureaus get the dispute, they go over to Lexus Nexus some of the time, and they look in their files to see if that's a valid uh, uh, a valid public records uh, that should be on their credit reports. Uh, because they should have had that cleared out of their system, when the credit bureaus do their uh, review, they just go straight to LexisNexis, it's still there, and they just say report it, update it, and it's accurate. So what I told her to do is she's going to have to go straight to the person that's providing the information, get it resolved with them, and then come back around using that same document that she sent to them just in case they don't do their job and then have that document plus her dispute information with each of the bureaus separately and send a copy of that letter that she sent to LexisNexis and then send it to them so they can come the other direction. So you see one is going from one direction straight to the furnisher. The other one is going to go from the bureaus and they're going to go straight through to the furnisher. So at some point Somebody's going to have to get this on the desk, and a resolution is going to have to be made on that. Now, the next one was a uh, person is dealing with a landlord judgment, and the landlord is unresponsive to doing anything, even if they wanted to come to a resolution and pay a settlement on the judgment. Uh, the landlord is not being responsive. The way that we've handled these is you're going to have to write the judge and you're going to have to notify them that this judgment uh, that you wish to have it vacated due to non uh, uh, unresponsive uh, on the behalf of the plaintiff. Some of the time the attorney will call you and or send a letter saying, okay, uh, maybe the person retired or, you know, uh, we we had this happen with a, a business that where the business closed down, but they were still trying to collect old accounts that they had put into judgment. The attorney might might contact you, uh, but if they don't, then you have a a a, a route to get it vacated. You're gonna uh, have to go back in the court. They're, you're gonna probably 
well, not probably, you're going to have to do a legal notice in the, the newspaper notifying the uh, plaintiff of what you, you're trying to do. And if they don't show up to court for that hearing, then it will be vacated. Uh, the next step here is ID theft by husband. ID theft by someone that is in your home, your spouse, uh, commits ID theft against you. Uh, now, to give a little bit of the backstory on this, they were getting divorced. The wife fell ill in the hospital. Her husband, or now ex-husband, uh, put went out and did a whole bunch of stuff in her name, probably thinking she was going to pass away. Didn't pass away. Got better. Got divorced. Whole bunch of stuff came back at her. Simple, easy. I think I showed the form before. Uh, what you got to do uh, on my this here. Uh, but it's the affidavit form. I think we've already. I had one land here. We submitted it. Oh, hold on. Let me grab it here. Affidavit form. I don't want to show uh, a new. This is one of the customers. But go on. Google type in that you'll get it. It's from the FTC You'll be able to uh, Send this fill this out send it in That'll be taken care of usually 30 days or 30 days It'll be taken care of and uh, All of the stuff will be wiped off you'll use that information also to get it off of your credit report some of the times they Do the work and send it, but I don't usually rely on uh, you know these departments to do the work what I do is to you file it to a, a department that everyone is going to recognize and there you know when you file it to them then you send it back to the bureaus to get that stuff taken away and you also f send that document to the creditors uh, that the ID theft uh, took place with so they will stop trying to come after you and then some of the times they're going to send over their own form that you have to fill out again and resubmit. And so th that's why some of the time the back and forth with getting the debt wiped away legally uh, can be some back and forth. But it could off of your credit reports, it's usually done within 30 to 45 days on the first time when we notify them that uh, someone was a victim of ID theft. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is auto loan deferments and really just deferments, period. I talked about it when the when this uh, uh, virus emergency or situation happened in our country. And I talked about everyone, if you needed to, just be aware that you can get payment deferments on your credit cards. Obviously, your student loans, you can get them on your auto, your mortgage, all of these different uh, payday loans. Everybody was offering uh, payment deferments and some people took advantage of it a lot of people did and I've seen even in the news where people that they had talking uh, to people about payment deferments they didn't even really know what they were talking about and that's because these people have money they never experienced what you and I have ever went through um, my story in the 1990s me and my wife had to do payment deferments uh, that's how I learned how to get out of debt and also um, some of the stuff that I utilize for helping people with credit repair. But you can get payment deferments and this individual contacted me and about an auto loan. And I was like, you can get auto loan deferments. It's very, it's easy to do, but I think what it is is that people don't have the confidence to do it. And so basically what you do, and I do have a program for that telling you exactly what to do who to call with your particular lender how to find the department to call uh what to say and how to document it so nothing is is left for chance uh because in 2008 there was an issue where uh they gave uh deferments to people on mortgages and then all of a sudden they try to come around and do a, a foreclosure on them. And that was because they didn't properly document it. I show you how to do that. That's why I created that program was from what people had went through in 2008. But you basically would just call your auto lender, 
ask to speak to the hardship department if they have one. Most of them might call it a hardship department or um, collections department potentially. And you talk to them and you let them know that you're going through your hardship and you want to see how many months can you get your auto loan deferred. Now, you don't play catch up. So say, for instance, they give you three months to make no payments. Some of them will even give a pause on the interest. <clears throat> the interest now, uh, <clears throat> because of what's going on uh, in our country, but a normal deferment is where they'll just give you three to six months of no payments. They'll let the interest rate keep occurring, and then you they'll put the payments on the back of your loan. So you don't have to play catch up when the three months was over. You don't have to pay the other uh, three months in with that fourth month. You don't have to do that. You just start paying as usual. Uh, but now that I've seen them where they pause the interest, pause the payments three to six months. But you have to know what to do when you call them and you're just, you got to let them know you're experiencing a financial hardship, whatever that hardship is. It could be uh, financial, it could be emotional, it could be just things that you're going through family-wise, it could be another family member. You need to let them know what you're going through, let them know that you'll be good to go and whatever they offer you, if they say three months, they take say six months, take whatever you need so you can regroup and, and uh, start making the payments at that time. And then what I tell people to do with the money that you're not paying out, you need to save that money, pay down some debt, and get an emergency fund put together. That's the easiest way to put an emergency fund together. Don't blow the money. Uh, but companies are doing it. All of them are doing it. So you might as well take advantage of it while it's available. Uh, all right, so I'm going to be ending the video here. Please like this video. I really appreciate it. It helps us bring more people to the channel so they can get help. If you need help with your credit, please visit the creditrepairshop.com. If you need your credit reports and scores, I'd really appreciate it. If you go to the website, your the number three scores.com, it helps me support doing the channel here and uh, also it gets you the information and if you want to become a customer of ours we use those reports to import into our software system to do all of the work so uh, please subscribe to the channel please like it post your comments ask your questions and until next time this is Stephen Williams founder and president of the credit repair shop .com. thank you